Welcome to this tutorial showing you how to create a piece of work in the style of Robin Reed, who has done this really nice text portrait. Before you start your um, piece, I would suggest practicing first typing something into a new project, um, being able to change the size, going to the arrow tool, being able to change the size using that, even when it lags like it did just then being able to stretch it, squish it, and then learning how to right click on the layer and rasterize it before going to edit, transform, warp, and learning how to warp it. So there's different ways. There's grabbing the corners, which will stretch them out or squish them in, and you can move the corners any way you like. And then you've got these handles that allow you to mess around with the insides along the edges and bring the edges wherever you want them to be and you can lengthen them or shorten them the choice is yours okay and then the last thing is you've got these handles on the inside which will move the lettering to make it more legible once you stretch the outside okay and they'll move it around and I think it's worth having a practice having a go using this tool before you do anything else ahead of starting the tutorial. Okay, right. I've opened up my portrait in Photopia and I'm making a new layer, which um, I'm gonna leave above my portrait. And I'm going to change the opacity down to about 75% on my portrait. I'm gonna go back to that top layer. The opacity is gonna help me be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, and I'm gonna grab the text tool I'm going to type in my first word. Um, I decided to ask my wife for words and base the text in my portrait off of the answer she gave that this, the, I asked for words that would describe me. Okay. Um, once you've opened up your text box and you've typed in, I would suggest choosing the type font that you want. I've gone for a type font called Black Han Sans. Okay, it's a sans serif type, about halfway down. And I chose it because it's quite chunky and it fills the space. And um, that's gonna be needed really as you begin to warp the text because you want it to fit nicely within your portrait. Okay, so I've rasterized it now I'm transform warp and I can begin to play with it and warp it okay grabbing the handles moving them up it's important to move the handles up before you move the corners up or else it will start flipping over okay then you can change the handles to fit it along the space okay and I type in my second world stubborn and uh, these words aren't necessarily in the order my wife gave them to me I'd like to think that the second word out of her mouth wouldn't be stubborn but uh, it might be so again stretching this I've chosen words that I thought would fit a space better so for smaller spaces I thought of smaller words or asked for smaller words and for bigger spaces I asked for bigger words I think that's worth considering. And you'll notice I'm trying to follow the contours of the face. So I'm trying to go around the bottom of the eye and along my kind of um, upper cheek into my nose. Okay, next word. And I just wanted to show you um, how to do vertical. Now I wouldn't go diagonal like that because when you warp it, so I'm just going to rasterize and then edit warp. What you get is the handles being away from the corners of the word and it's quite difficult to move it and warp it then. So I would suggest either going with the word as it is there or turning it 90 degrees 
and that way when you warp it the handles will be in the corners of the word and you'll see it is it does make it a little bit more difficult to stretch it all the way over to a diagonal position but it's not impossible and i think it's definitely easier than having the handles away 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 okay and you can see the importance of grabbing the right handle here making sure that in some um, points i move handles away from each other so i can see what i'm doing knowing I'm not going to leave those handles there. That's the beauty of this. You can stretch it, squish it as much as you need to to get it in the right place. And I'm worrying about really the outside edge before I start to worry about those handles in the middle. Right, another word I'm happy with. Start another word. And this one's going to go along the bridge of my nose, again, working from a vertical. And I'm just stretching it because I know it's going to need to be a little bit wider. So I might as well start with that. And if I start wider, if I start a bit bigger, it means it's easier to see the different handles. Slowly bringing it together. This is definitely not a quick piece of work, but I do think that taking time on this will really pay off. Right, next word. Obviously, I don't need to remind you to make sure you're spelling your words properly. You don't want to spend all this time committing to a piece of work that's going to take you a while to later find out that you've come unstuck just because of a misspelling. So here I'm really looking for going around the edge of the top of the eye but not going onto the eyebrow. Okay, I'm going to leave the eyebrow as its own thing, a lot like um, Robin Reed did. Okay, here I am struggling with trying to make those M's move over and then I realise, oh, well, if I go and do the other end and sort that out, then it will the problem will sort itself. As soon as I started moving everything at the other end, I then realised, oh, I, now I can move the handles to make the, the lettering look less twisted. Okay. And then I think I'll do one more word just to show you working on the inside. So I'm going to go with angry this time, shrink it down to fit. And I did think about words that would be less seen and words that would be more seen. So thinking about my uh, less What's the word? Complementary characteristics. Where could I put those in in a more hidden way? Um, right, now you join me back and I've done all of the words. It did take quite a while, but it's definitely effective. And you can see how I followed the contours of the face and I put a lot of smaller words around my features to make sure that my features were um, nicely detailed. And I really made sure I followed the kind of shape of the top of my head as well. You'll notice that I left my eyebrows and I left my pupils and my nostril and my beard. Okay, uh, because we want them to go black like the rest of the background. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the word layers together and I'm going to right click and merge those layers and it's going to put them all on one layer for me. Okay, and I'm going to drag that layer underneath my portrait and I'm going to work on my portrait for a minute. I'm going to image adjustments black and white and clicking OK and I'm going image adjustments brightness and contrast 
and I just want to make my image a bit more dramatic by upping the contrast and making it a tiny bit darker. Okay, I may well change that again in a bit, but for now that's a little bit more dramatic. Okay, I've then created a new layer and I've dragged it down the bottom and I'm filling that layer just with a whole layer of black, just paint bucket black. Okay, you can't see it because it's underneath my portrait, but it has gone black. Okay, and now I'm going back to my portrait and I'm doing the magic, which is right clicking and clicking on clipping mask. And that takes everything that is the words on the layer underneath and clips my photo to those words. Okay, it's magic. All right, and as I said, I might do it. I am going to do it. I just want to adjust the brightness and contrast again. Now I've got the words on just to make sure that they are really nice and everything shows on the contours of my face. Okay, and I've got one last thing I want to do and that is just to add some details to my beard. So I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna get the, um, I'm gonna zoom in, I'm gonna get the free pen over here and I'm gonna make sure I've got no fill. So I tick the X and I get white for my line and I'm gonna make a line about three, I think. And then um, I want to make sure the tolerance is right up to help me out, okay? And then I'm just gonna do some curvy lines on my beard. This is a very optional part. If you don't want to put this in, you might not have to, but because I've got a beard and it's kind of on the front of my face, I think it looks a bit weird not to have something showing that I've got a beard in the picture. Okay. Once I've done that and I'm happy, I'm just gonna knock those back a bit. I'm just gonna select all the shapes that made the beard, right click, merge those layers. And then I'm going to right click on that same layer and rasterize them so they turn into a picture rather than live shapes. Then I'm going to go to image adjustments, hue saturation and change the lightness, bring it down so they're a lot more subtle. Okay. And click OK. And then to make them even more subtle still, I'm going to go to um, filter and blur, and I'm gonna go Gaussian blur. And I'm just gonna put a Gaussian blur of about three on there. Click OK, and you'll see that knocks them back even more. They become even more um, kind of vague. And that is my piece done and dusted. So I'll just zoom out for you. There you go. And that is the end of this tutorial. I hope you find it really helpful.